All right, friends, we're shipping a new experience with an X, and it's much more performant, especially with TypeScript mod repos. It's much more flexible to adapt your specific needs and allows you to much more easily adapt an X in your specific environment. But I'm not gonna talk about that right now. I'll have that at the end of the video. So stick with me for that. Right now, I just wanna jump in and show you how this actually works. So this is the structure of our workspace and I created this by using the create NX workspace command. So right now we are using this behind a dash dash workspaces flag because we still wanna polish some of the aspects, got us some free pack from your all, and then we're going to flip the switch and make this the default behavior in NX. Now, if you have already an NPM workspace or PMPM workspace, etc., you can also run NX in it and it will initialize NX for you in your specific workspace setup. Now, one thing that was important for this new experience, if you want, is that the whole setup is as simple as possible and doesn't create a lot of overhead for you. So we're basically just creating and pre-configuring for you what you're actually using without out of the box generating a bunch of different defaults that we think might be good for you. And so if you look, for instance, at the package JSON, this is pretty much empty. So we have a single NX package in here, which is the NX core, and we have this NXJS, which is an NX plugin that helps us to use this workspace for JavaScript and TypeScript projects, which we're actually doing in here. We also use here the workspaces property, and this is because we are leveraging the NPM workspaces for linking our packages in the mono repo. Obviously, you can also choose to go with Yarn or PMPM or Bun. That will work right in the same fashion. Another thing that you might notice here is that NXJSON, this is basically some metadata file, some additional configuration file where we can fine tune how NX works in your workspace. Here, for instance, it configures that NXJS plugin I just mentioned, but we can also here define some fine tuning for our caching inputs and outputs or define our task pipeline. For now, we can keep this empty and I'm gonna look right away into creating a new TypeScript package in here. So right now the packages folder is empty and I could go obviously ahead and just create it on my own. That will work equally well. Uh, it's just much easier to leverage the generators code scaffolding mechanisms that come with these plugins that I just mentioned. And so here specifically, I'm going to leverage that NXJS plugin and I'm going to generate a library and I'm going to create that in the packages folder. And I'm calling, calling this my TSLib. So this is gonna ask me a bunch of questions, for instance, whether I want to use a bundler. For now, I'm actually going to go without the bundler because most of the times you might not even need one. We're going to touch on that a bit later. And I'm not gonna set up linting for now, nor testing. I wanna intentionally keep this as simple as possible. And so once this gets created, what you can see here is a setup that I will probably have created on my own by hand as well. So here's just a source folder with different types of files, an index entry file here, just a simple function, just to have something to start off. But if you look at the package JSON, this is pretty much a standard package JSON. So we have the entry points that we configured, we also set up the exports in here. In this case, since it is not buildable, there's no build step, it just directly points to the TypeScript files. So we can write import this into, let's say, a VTAP, and V would handle then the whole translation for us. Now, one thing to notice here is you don't see an X in here, but given that we configure these plugins, these are able to infer tasks automatically. So while you could actually have here a scripts tag and create your own scripts and NX will just pick them up. You can also not have anything and NX will automatically detect this is a JavaScript plugin, this is a JavaScript package, and so it will infer tasks. And so where I clicked right now here at the top here is something that is being provided by NX console, which is a VS Code extension, also for IntelliJ. And this opens up here the tasks that are being inferred for this specific package. So there's no build step here. So what we are going to set up here is just a type check command. Now, if you don't have NX console, you can also run this on the terminal and it will show the same output here in the browser window. So you could actually verify what commands are available for a specific package in here. Now, let me go into more details of this type check command specifically, because another thing that we do in addition to configuring here an NPM workspace setup is we configure TypeScript product references for you. So if you go here to the root level TS config, you might see that here there is a references property which now points to our library. And so this happened when we ran this generator, it automatically filled this one in here. So it correctly points here to my TS lib. We would then have additional references configured that points to the TS config lib JSON, which then overrides some of the parts like the root directory for the compilation unit, as well as like some caching files that TypeScript product references can leverage. 
And this is very interesting, especially if we start linking things together. So let's go ahead and actually add the NX React plugin to create a new Vite application that can then consume our TypeScript package. And so again, if I generate a new NX React application now, I'm going to do that in an apps folder and call this my Vite app. Again, I'm keeping this on the simple side, so I want to use Vite, no linting, no unit testing, no playwright setup. And so what we got now here is in our apps folder up here, we got a new Vite application set up. And so here again, source files are pretty much standard. Let's look at the more interesting part, which is here, the different configuration files. So the package JSON here is pretty much empty. All the tasks are being inferred automatically by NX, so build, serve, etc. what Vite kind of offers us. If we go here into the tsconfig app, so you see here again, all the TypeScript project reference configuration is configured, as well as here the tsconfig, which references app app TS config file. And at the root level, we also now have an updated references property, which now points also to our Vite app. Now, what is most interesting now is if our Vite app starts referencing our monorepo package, in this case, my tslib. So if I go up here, let's go here into the app tsx file and let me import here from tsmono my tslib. And this exposes a simple function. And so we can just actually go ahead and just render this here, the string returned by this function. Now that we actually link the two, and we can actually show this in the product graph that is being rendered here by the NX console extension. So you can see now we have a link between these packages. Most interestingly now is if we want to leverage TypeScript product references, we would actually have to go ahead to make sure it is correct and go here in our tsconfig app as well as the tsconfig add a references property that now points to our mytslib package. Now this can obviously be super tedious, especially in large mon repos, it's basically almost not doable. And so for that purpose, what we did is if I build my application, so if I build vdapp, what you're gonna see is that there is this JS plugin that we have mentioned before that has a TypeScript sync command check. And this verifies whether given the product graph that NX already has, matches what TypeScript would expect under the hood and figures out this is not in sync, so it proposes to sync that for us. And so we can confirm here with yes. And what would happen if I go back here in my tsconfig app JSON of the Vite app, you can see now the reference has been added as well as also in here, we now reference the tslib package. And so this allows us to perfectly keep our TypeScript product references in sync which allows us to get all the benefits of TypeScript product references, but avoid all the downsides of having to manually keep that in sync. And so similarly, we could go ahead and leverage other plugins that NX has to offer. And so we could, for instance, generate a new React library, add some components and reference them from our VDAP. We could add the NX Storybook plugin and configure Storybook for an existing React project, etc. So we adjusted all of these different plugins to work perfectly also in such an NPM workspaces environment and together with types of product references. There's one other thing though that I wanted to highlight specifically because it's such a common pain point that you potentially have in these NPM based monorepo setups with TypeScript. And so let's generate a new library again. And let's call this into the packages here and let's call this um, buildable lib. And this is specifically a library that we're going to build with TSC. I'm not gonna add in lynching, etc. And so if we look at the setup right away, you can notice there will be a difference in that in our buildable library now, we don't point to the TypeScript file, but rather we point to our JS files in here. So that means we need to pre-build it. And so if we now go, for instance, let's say into our mytslib, and we're going to reference our new buildable library from in here, then NX already has inferred a build step for the specific library. So if I open up again here that inferred view, you can see there is already a build step in here. And it also has already pre-configured our whole setup such that if I run NX build my Vite app, it would automatically build all the dependent products beforehand. So you can see here it depends one, it builds one product that depends on it, which is exactly our buildable lib here, which you can see here in the dist output folder. And so if I show here the graph, you can see 
There's the VDAP depending on my TS lib, depending on my buildable setup, in my buildable lib setup. And so an X already configured that pipeline for us without us having to really deal with that. Now, this is not actually the pain point that I want to show, but rather what happens if we start serving our application. Because if we now run the serve command for our VDAP, app, it's gonna render it on the browser. So let me pull that in. So you can see we get this string rendered in here. But if I go to my buildable library in here, and let's say we want to add here a dash and I save again, nothing will happen because we need to pre-build our library actually. So if I would open up here a new terminal and run mpx and x build buildable lib, it will pre-compile that one. Now V the V dev server would recognize that change of the pre-built artifact and would obviously refresh it. Now, in terms of developer experience, that is really not the best one you can have. And that's why we added a new inferred task for our applications, in this case my Vite app, which is called watch depths. And so if I scroll up here, you can see there's a watch depths command that automatically configures watching for all your dependencies of a given application and rebuilds them if they happen to change. And all of this happens in a very efficient way, such that even if you have hundreds of libraries in your workspace, it will still work. So for this to work, I'm just splitting my terminal and I'm running here NX watch depths on my Vite app. And so this will now keep watching. And if I go back to my buildable library in here and I change this to like say colon, and save, you would see this automatically triggers rebuild. And you can see here, it automatically refreshes our Vite dev server. So in terms of the highlights of this new setup, there's two different aspects that I want to point out. First of all, the whole ergonomics and DX. We pretty much stay out of your way while still enhancing your experience. So if you look at the Vite app, this is pretty much a standard configuration setup that you would also get from the Vite CLI, but we still can enhance it with some inferred tasks, for instance, such as the build here already configures caching. It already makes sure that it builds downstream products that are dependent on this Vita application, for instance, or it adds things like the watch depths here that just makes it much more nicer to work in such a monorepo configuration. But also if you look at our packages folder in here, you can see the package JSON for those different packages are pretty much standard as you would write them, but it might be tedious to write them by, by hand. So if it is not buildable, we point to the TS file. If it is buildable, we generate the proper DTS file links, etc., and make sure there is a pre-built step in these libraries here, such that that produces the correct output for you. And finally, there's obviously the whole ergonomics of automatically updating all these TypeScript product references for you. That brings me then to the second point, which is performance. So one of the main issues that we have seen in really large TypeScript-based applications is the whole build and type checking that takes a long time. And this is not just necessarily the type checking actually that you experience in your editor, even though that's also being improved by using product references, but it's actually the type checking commands that you run on CI, you run on your local machine. So why is that? So we ran some benchmarks on our current setup and the new setup with types of product references. And so here, for instance, you see an application that depends on a bunch of different huge libraries, huge TypeScript libraries. And so if you look at the setup in here, these libraries just have a lint step and nothing really else. So if you run the build and the type check, even though they might be separate tasks, they're run once for the entire workspace. Now the new setup in a very same structure, if you now look here at the different configuration, each of these packages gets an independent type check command. So very often we've seen that the build and type check command is a single command that is being run on CI. And clearly if this one, for instance, takes 20 minutes, your minimum running time will be at least 20 minutes of actually running this specific task. Now, many frameworks such as also Vite split this up. So there's a build and linking task and there's a type checking task. And so this already makes it much nicer because now you can at least parallelize these two and your overall build and CI running time will already get a little faster. But still, in large monorepos, which have hundreds and hundreds of TypeScript projects, this may take a long time. And so in the current setup, what happens is basically, if you run the build and type check command at your application level for all the different packages that you might have, you most often, unless you pre-build some of the packages, you will have a single type check program that checks the entire tree of your monorepo. And so this not just results in huge performance degradation because you need to run it for all of them, it's not splittable, but it also takes a lot of memory on CI. So most often in such large workspace, you have to actually have some beefy machines to make sure they were able to handle the RAM requirements for running such a type checking command. 
Now, what TypeScript product reference allows us to do is actually create a type check command for each of these different packages that we have. And most importantly, they are now also cacheable. So there's no just one cache hit or miss, but each individual of these is potentially cacheable and can therefore be restored. At the same time, the RAM needs and requirements will be much, much smaller. So you can use less machines. But one main key aspect here is that now we have smaller tasks that can be distributed in a much, much more efficient way. So we could still run them obviously in one machine, but we could also have a second machine, have a third machine and spread them out depending of how many machines we want to allocate and make the whole overall CI much, much faster, therefore. And this benefit also directly reflected in the benchmarks that we ran. So we had created two different setups, one with the old configuration of an X where each of these libraries wouldn't have a dedicated typejack command, but it rather happens globally. And then we had the same exact setup, but now with the new configuration where each has a type check command and you leverage the product references setup. Now, this obviously allows us to distribute much, much better. And so if we look at our CI runs in NS Cloud here, you can see that TS Benchmark Old is around 10, 11 minutes of runtime. And if I open this up here, you can see we basically have two different tasks that we can distribute. And therefore the distribution level is very, very low. On the other hand, if we look on the new setup, we see here the TS benchmark new, it took around seven minutes. So we're around 36% faster. And the main reason here is because the distribution level is super high, right? So we're around almost 70%. So you can see instead of like 22 minutes, we can run it in roughly seven minutes. And this is because we can distribute all of these different individual type check commands. Now also note, this is the worst case scenario because we don't hit any caches here. So subsequent runs could potentially cache at each of these individually, versus before, the caching can only really apply for all or nothing, right? So either you basically cache the entire build or type check command or nothing at all. So if one of these libraries changes, all the cache would be busted. So if TypeScript product reference are like the holy grail for solving performance issues in TypeScript monorepos, why are people not using them? And this kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier, it is mostly because they are so maintenance heavy, especially in these large monorepos, which would, on the other hand, mostly benefit from these advantages of incremental compilation. So just to give you an idea of looking here at our benchmarking setup that we use to benchmark the new configuration, we would have for our application to maintain these references by hand. So here you can see this reference property in the tsconfig app. And so we would have to link them and keep them updated as our monorepo structure changes, which here it's just for one application, but you have obviously libraries that are depending between each other. So we need to go in these libraries and keep those references up to date as well, which in a large monorepo is basically not doable at all. So with this new setup, especially with the sync generator, we are hoping to take away the whole burden of configuring and maintaining these product references while giving you all the benefits of incremental type checking and distribution on CI. So hope you like this whole run through of the new experience. Definitely try it out, give us feedback, and I'll hope to see you in the next one.